Bug bashes. Anybody heard about bug bashes? Very good technique. Okay, so yeah. another manual, a manual testing technique is right. Uh, bug bash is actually a core part of uh, Agile Scrum. The idea here is everybody gets kind of involved. You, you, you tell everybody to stop what they're doing, stop calling customers, stop designing stuff, stop building stuff, and you pound out as many bugs as possible. Right? Highly focused, time box, short period of time. It's not typically not directed because the idea is this guy has different insight than this guy, than this guy, than that guy. So in your case, your business members, they're great at the supermodel tour. They're going to like, sign me up for that one, right? And the developers will be you know, a garbage collector tour or something like that. But the idea is you're using some of that, I use it again and again, hopefully it doesn't get too worn out with that serendipity. The idea is you're picking everybody so you have a large variety. They all have different expertise. That gives you diversity by very nature. Another good approach for this, as I've seen, is it actually works if you have a team that has more than two. I, you guys are probably small, so it probably doesn't necessarily help, but if you have two teams, swap. So if you, that's, that's why we try to encourage, for example, a product vertical. We'll have different scrum teams that we've broken down. We'll try to get them to test other people's code. So the bug bash works is you test somebody else's. And, all right, right? Um, agile scrum. So you, you want to bug bash, sketch, schedule it in there, it's probably a pretty good idea. But the idea is here, your time box, let's take as many people with as many variable skills and let's hammer at it, right? Let, let's hammer at it. So it's not a tour in the way that it has, a, has that initial vector, but the idea is we have a time box, but what we're doing is we figure out the test we run by the very nature of the people we put on the test. Agile is an iterative process that was very well documented. It's a particular type of, of iterative process. Scrum is a, one of the Agile processes. They usually use the words together because Scrum is Agile, but you can have Agile without Scrum. Scrum has like a couple different tenets. Uh, I guess the guy who owns Mountain Go Software, uh, Mike Kahn, he's probably one of the founding fathers, the Agile Manifesto, but he kind of created the Scrum, has uh, ideas of sprints and stuff like that. It's a way of development. So we have, we have the idea of iterative, and then within a product development cycle, you have sprints, which is probably a really bad word because it sounds like you're always sprinting and you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to run out. <laughs> they don't mean sprint. They mean sprint as an, an elapsed time. So what happens is, what happens is when you're in the sprint, everything's locked in. No, the re none of the requirements change or anything like that. And people pick and all that stuff. But once you're out of the sprint, you reevaluate. You do a retrospective right there. You do a demo. You figure out what's the next thing off the backlog. And so you're iterative between sprints, but inside the sprint, you're not iterative. It's very different from rational, which is a waterfall process where we have like inception, elaboration, development. And, and, and production, right? So it, that, that's a left to right type of, or I guess if you're really old, like Microsoft MSF, like the solution framework idea, those are iterative uh, development product types. Agile Scrum is one that's meant to be iterative. They have, for example, a limit of teams that are kind of like, I think it's a seven plus or minus two, right? They want it to be a certain size and they want the idea of that, you know, your iterations are only a certain length and so on and so forth. Agile Scrum came out of a need that iterative was very popular for a while. Okay, waterfall, ooh. Old, nobody wants to do that kind of stuff anymore. Let's go iterative. Everybody went iterative. And then what happens is when the sales guys actually try to go to a customer and say, sell consulting is iterative, people are like, so I'm going to pay you some money. You're not going to tell me how long it's going to take. You're not going to tell me what you deliver. And you're not going to, and, you're, and I can't just give you a whole bunch of process. You're not going to sign off that you're going to build everything I tell you to. It's more expensive. <laughs> is it, right? So the idea here is they came at and, and then people say, hey, wait a minute. There, there's still some good principles. Let's give this down because at the end of the way, the customer has to be happy. People generally sell product and, and you know what products, I'll tell you right away, I like projects to finish. The project that never finishes, it's not so fun, no matter what anybody says to you, right? What happens is it confines the idea that you have certain agility or iterations within sprints, but the idea is the product, as what Deborah was saying, one key tenet within Agile Scrum is that at the end of every sprint, you have sh potentially shippable code. They put that potentially in there, but the idea is, yeah, you're right. The testing phase does not come as another iteration. The shippable code means that your definition of done, you cannot collect the user story points, or basically you cannot check it off the wall that you've done that feature until it's ready to ship, right? So what happens is that what that means is that you don't go back fixing things or you don't start a whole bunch of pro features you never finish. You take a finish feature and you finish it. You, even if you have to break it down smaller to fit into a sprint, you always finish it. So if the world ends tomorrow and they say you have to ship at the end of that sprint, you can't. If your product owner comes down or your business 
the business owner comes in and says, hey, I want to see something, at the end of your sprint, you always have a demo to show them. There is shippable code. So it's not just the idea of continuous integration that my code checks in, but that idea is that that feature is finished. Because what happens is the problem is we used to develop like this. And, and I'm going to get shot for saying this, but the idea is that we used to develop in the waterfall method where some designers and a couple people, architects, they would come up and they come up this uh, SRS and then they build and design this thing and then they implement it and then we split it up and we'd say, Nick, you do the server part and Deborah, she's going to design the screens and, you know, like Eric here is going to divide, you know, the, the MVC model or I don't know, something like that, you know, the, the, the doc DOM or something like that, right? And then everybody would come back on their end and they would say, oh, we need another month of putting everything together. Or what happens is you design something, you say, Deborah's not pulling her weight. She's not giving me the screens. I couldn't finish it. So I had to go do another task and come back to it. And you'd have these tasks of all, as, as products, uh, features, you switch, you'd just see this thing build up, but none of them get finished, right? So Scrum tries to do what it does as a burn down, that you're taking things off. But once you're done that one, it's gone to the ether. If you want to fix the project, it's another user story, it's another, piece of work, but the idea is that you want shippable, you want it to be done. That's why they have a definition of done. In Scrum, what you're doing is you're breaking down things like Lego blocks. So sure, I might not have the Taj Mahal, but I might have a bungalow type of thing, but it's still a house. Uh, as as from, from the management point of view, when we're working on teams, we're kind of seeing what progress SAP can kind of do in teams. We get the idea of, of velocity too, which is a big term within Scrum. So before we had very little idea of how long a project would take, and there's a lot of variability. Scrum allows us to be able to say, hey, I know I estimated user stories and these kind of storyboard units and stuff like that, and every single sprint I can get about 40 points done. And eventually over time you can actually figure out very accurately in the burn down how fast your team's gonna work. And then you can actually, the estimating is quite good. Out of all the different methodologies we have, by far Scrum has the least amount of variability and the closest match to between what you're going to say to customers you're going to do to actually what you will do. I think one, we almost covered all the key words in Scrum. I think the only one we did is self-directed. It's the sort of self-driven is like the only thing that we didn't talk about. So that, that's, that's what Nick's point is like, you know, they get together and people, you don't give anybody work, they kind of pick it off the, right, yeah. But the idea is, Josh, let, let's take this offline because I mean, let's talk to Kathleen. I mean, if there's need, like people want to talk about this, uh, I'm scum master coach here, so I can do this, I can come back and talk about this time because I'm not sure that, uh, you know, like I kind of emailed Kathleen this example before. I don't want to be, my pedagogical point of view, I don't want to give you like, it's like the blind man and like elephant. I don't want to give you all these little pieces and you're like, what's an elephant? It's a rope. You know, what's an elephant? It's a tree trunk, right? The idea, because I'm giving you little bits and pieces and I apologize, but that's sort of the only time we have. But let, let, let's talk about it. Because the other thing is, if it's important too for like the meek and the map stuff, like I'm definitely more than willing to kind of help Kathleen out here or there's probably other people here who can help. It, it's a very popular, you should see how many people have signed the, 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 man, the Agile Manifesto. It, it's, it's by far the most popular development uh, paradigm right now, I would say.